I see you've been following me. Yeah, you. man, what you seen? I seen that they broke in your shit at the protests and all yeah, that. All and right. you still came right back and with a check and yeah. don't, man, uh -huh. come on. Real niggas do yeah. real things. For real, for sure. I'm just we trying, know what's going I'm just on. I'm show people, you know what I'm saying? Coming from the streets, you could do something. And that's exactly what it's up. That's what we're doing. Yeah, for sure. That's why I respect it, you know what I'm saying? Because people, you know, everybody got a platform. Don't want to, you know, help the Lord go out. But when I got my own platform, I said, I'm going to do everything that's possible for me right. to keep on, you know, transpiring to the next level. I seen when you had the first spot, then you moved to downtown. Yeah. Yeah, man, I see, I've been keeping up. Yeah, I had grew that joint. The, the yeah. gas station dude. Started. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I've been I've been seeing what's going yeah, on. Yeah, for sure. We'll be ready in uh, T minus three. I'll be over here directing this shit. You don't be seeing me, Chico. <laughs> when I'm when I'm directing, my name is. Carlos Pierre Portier. <laughs> I'm a French nigga. That French I nigga. I turn into all. Speaks in here. A whole French mm. nigga when I'm directing, yeah? Watch this shit. I know all the lingo. Can I get a filter on too? Let me get a, uh, yeah. I feel like the light is popping. Where's my AD? Where's my AD? Let me see. Yeah, Dave, 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 is a shadow on Dave? <laughs> yeah, let's get the shadow off Dave. Yeah, let's get the shadow off Dave. Yeah, see, that's what happened. Yeah. In, in the that's midst, happened. in the yeah. midst of the Pat LeBat. In the Pat LeBat, you right. You right. Uh, <laughs> Carlos Pierre. Yeah. Portier? Yeah, Pierre Portier. Yeah, Porti it's Portier. Oh, okay, my bad. Okay. Portier. I, can't the, uh, I am. Once I finish this blunt, yeah. I just didn't want to get no more crumbs on my lap. Uh, yeah, can we, where's Chad Oubre? Is Oubre in? What's Yo, Oubre, we gotta get that follow-up call on that Carlos Bernard. Yeah, let's see what that is. I don't know if you know Big Day, but uh, I got my own liquor that's about to touch people's lips. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get them tore up off that Carlos Bernard, then I'm gonna have, I'm gonna send them down to your spot. I got it. Ooh, this about to be good. I hope you know. It's my man over here, Chico Bean, man. Community service warrior. <laughs> I don't know what that nigga might do, man. That nigga's a great person. He be doing all kind of shit. The nigga got this foundation where he read Braille to blind strippers. Oh, nigga, that's a good ass idea. That nigga right there, man. Blind strip club thing? You know them bitches bad at the blind strip club. Everybody bad in the motherfucker, dog. It's a blind strip around here, though. You ain't see a world star? Nah, she I haven't. bad too. Blind? Yeah, she blind and she got I the think fighting with a bitch. Doing drive -through show and she beat they up. They got one in Houston. A drive-through. Yeah, join the day. Cause it's wrong because you can't it. touch them. So like you right. gotta just pull yeah. up and do like a uh, like a you know the outside movie joint. Yeah, yeah that's how they do it. It's a video online. The blind stripper beat up the other stripper about some money. Somebody, research department, pull up the blind stripper, uh, blind stripper fight. You think I'm making this up? I gotta see it. I missed that one. The blind stripper fight. I gotta see it. <laughs> I'll be here all weekend, folks. That's why I'm the comedian. I like that shit. This sounds like some new, like if Desperado was black. Antonio Benegres. <laughs> Somebody had this shit where they said name a random NBA player. When y'all started this show? Did you find it? That guy is on it. Show it to Chico Bean. Ain't he ain't seen it. That's when I'm Hell yeah. Oh, show it to him. Yeah. She, the blind stripper showed up at her house, bro. So she whooping her ass blind? Uh, she fucking her up. Well, they say when you lose one instinct, the other ones is good. Because her sense of feel is great. Because 
Now you see she losing it. She don't know where to punch no more. Yeah, she hit now. Let us go. How you know the person breaking it up ain't somebody trying to help? Come on. Y'all gonna get enough of calling me a liar though. Man, that's crazy. That's crazy. Anybody else wanna fuck with Hollywood Coke? I ain't even gonna tell y'all about that documentary they got about that monkey that's a human, but whatever, man, because I don't appreciate y'all. <laughs> Say what? Don't make nobody else watch that shit. That shit is the most disturbing shit in the world, ain't it? You talking about cuz? You put me on to that shit. That monkey? Buddy, yeah. That monkey man? Yeah, uh-huh. If you want to see it, it's a documentary about this monkey called Oliver. Oliver. This motherfucker. Yeah, Oliver. Live Look like a human. That shit it's was a crazy. a humanoid monkey, man. This motherfucker walked around on two feet. He had no hair. Nigga strong as a bitch. They had to get rid of him because he wanted to fuck for real. The lady who was keeping him had to get rid of him because he kept trying to fuck. Ask me. That's real. That's true shit. She, I made she go watch yeah, the whole shit. Did. Cause as soon as you see it, you can be like, so what, what the fuck? Like what the fuck? It's like 80%. Nah, I don't know what it was. He was a humanoid monkey, nigga. <laughs> Talking about he was walking around upright, they everything. Him, yeah. <coughs> they called him a, hu a human pansy. Welcome back to another rendition of the 85 South Show. We're going to call this right here, this is one of our black excellence spotlights. You know what I'm saying? I know you see the strapping young man we got on the couch right here today. Big Dave from Big Dave Cheese Steaks. Yeah, hey man, got a bad look. What's happening? Appreciate I got a bad little bitch <laughs> from the town, like the freak late, pull up to her house with one of hey. Big Dave cheese steak. Big Dave, yeah. what's happening, man? And they what's fire up, if you're asking. If you give her one of these, you get the cat like Carol Baskins. Nigga, that's Ooh. I'm about to try one of these All right, man, kill that, kill that Antonio Banderas. <laughs> Big Dave, man, give us a dope ass intro. Let us know what it is, man. What you so, representing today? So basically, uh, my name Dag. I, uh, I dedicated my business to my father. It was Big Dave. He died from lung cancer in 2009. I moved from here, from Philly, and I wanted to just change my life. Set Philly example. in the building. Yeah, West what Philly. Part? West. Born like and Will raised. Smith, you hey. Know what I'm so I just wanted to come down here, start my life over. Uh, throughout the whole time of me building this brand, I seen that it was bigger than food. So I started seeing that I wanted to be, you know, involved in the community more, help the young brothers out. So that's what I'm doing right now. That's what's up, man. What I, made you pick Atlanta, of all places you uh, could went? My grandparents actually moved, moved, they from here, but they moved back down here in like 96. So I used to come down in the summertime. So when my dad had passed away, I was just like, you know, I'm gonna move, move out the city. You know, yeah. he, I promised him, actually, I was in the streets before, you know what I'm saying? I was going down the wrong road and, uh, when he, you know what I'm saying, when he died, you know what I'm saying, I gave him that promise, so that's what keep me focused right now. Man, how that's does a up. street nigga know that he is fire with the cheese steak, bro? Well, I'm from Philly, bro, and the thing is, like, all my family, you know what I'm saying, we cook a lot, but my grandfather, he taught me how to make seasoning, so I was like, shit, like, I gotta take something and, you know, take my gift and run with it. I used to play basketball, they ain't work out for me, I got in trouble, so, you know what I'm saying, I took the food and just took it to the next level, and, uh, being as though I honored it to my father, it's like, it's like he alive again. So right. it's like a, it's like a, you know what I'm saying? You you striving for something more than just you know being successful. Let me ask you this, you know, Philly, they take the cheese steak very, very, very serious. Oh yeah. What separates yours from all the rest of the competition? Um, to be to be honest with you, like I just told you, I not make season. Like <laughs> I feel like <laughs> you got I the season like, in. I yeah. caught that. Like yeah, I, I guess what I feel like no, like I really feel like you know what I'm saying like it ain't too many people in the world right now can make seasoning better than me. Like right now on paper, I'm top ten in the world in sandwiches, and I did it on a barbecue grill in Alabama. You know what I'm saying, 2018. So it's people that went to school for this. It's people that took this serious their whole life. I just got a gift. Right. You know what I'm saying. You got to use that gift, and, you, and when you're special with something, you you give it to the people. Right. So right now, my gift is the food was the start of it. And now it's, it's, it's connecting me to, you know, younger generations being able to help, you know, people that might be lost or I might be able to tell another entrepreneur or something I learned, you know what I'm saying, going through yeah. the game. So for me, it's information. So it's bigger than everything. So did you have to find all the information about being an entrepreneur? Oh, uh, man. Own? Uh, well, I tell you this. I, I moved to Atlanta in 2014. 
I had over a million dollars cash. I blew it in 14 months. Did I, Atlanta yeah. do that? Yeah. Like, I, Same I, I, shit happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> Same <laughs> shit you know happened like, to but, me. But I. Uh, That's I, very impressive, I, though. I, Ain't I, nobody gonna get in your business, but for a black man to have yeah. that amount of I money. Took, I, I took my last 200,000. Um, she had my accountant called me. I met up with him. I was going broke. I took my dream and just dumped it all in. You know what I'm saying? I was like, this ain't no going back. Right. Ain't no going back. It was for me. Right. Anybody who ain't see this dream to see this vision, they're going to watch it on TV. Right. Because I ain't failing. So I used to tell people that early on, get with me, invest with me, believe in me. Now you got to watch it. Because I built my own platform. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really need nobody. I'm just keep on being there for the people who are there for me. Because without the community, I wouldn't be nothing. So as long as I'm there for them and they know I got their back, that's all I need. That's How you stay thing. focused through the process, though? Because like you, you said, you had a that amount of money coming down, hit cash, that means that you already had some type of hustle in you. So when you got to a point where you was at your last or your last little bit of money and decided to do this, like what kept you from going back to what you knew worked that got you that and still applying yourself to making the business work? Um, well, for one, I come from a family of hustlers. What I mean by that is like my grandfather, he was a, a farmer um, for a big construction company. My father worked for it, so all my family actually worked together. So I seen men actually take care of families, you know, throughout my whole life. So I ain't never, be honest, I ain't never seen a deadbeat in my life in my family. So all I know is how to be a man, you know what I'm saying? Step up to the plate. So when my father died, it was like, he told me like, flat out, I raised you to stand on your own two feet. You gonna be all right. So I take those words every day and stand on my own two feet, ask no man for nothing. And that's how I got to where I'm at right now. Right. Because at the end of the day, we don't stick together as, 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 as a whole, as black people. Like I've been around, you know, you know, other races and it's not our fault because we get tricked out our spot a lot. We might have something special and then we ain't never seen this type of money before and we get offered something and we sell off when you got a billion dollars to plan, you know what I'm saying? Right. But we don't have the right platform to say, all right, this big brother right here, he, he already successful. He already got money. They get together and help somebody out. We, we always gotta protect our yeah. Interests. We don't protect we don't protect our own. So it start with us first before we start going against everybody else. Right. right. So I'm learning that. So with my platform right now that I built in Atlanta for the last six years, I'm gonna take my platform and I'm gonna run with it the way I know to run with it. Right. And I can't be accountable for nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Right. But right now I'm working on a lot of big things. Um, like with Rashad Brooks, I had partnered up with Slutty Vegan and we had you know did the yeah, whole did life insurance back. thing, the right. car, the scholarships. And right now we're working on paying life insurance on 25,000 black men in Atlanta right now. So you got two restaurants that's trying to empower the community any way possible. And right now it's just like whoever else going to step up, step up. But, you know, I'm just going forward with what I could do, what I built, because I built a multi-million dollar company in six years, like right. for my last. You know what Let I'm saying? Let me ask you this, because I know that didn't your shop get vandalized? Yeah. Doing all the protests and yep. stuff like that. Tell these people how you responded to that. Yeah, so basically, uh, when my windows got broke out, I was upset because throughout the pandemic, I fed over 40 hospitals. I, every day, man, I was, I was going to different hospitals, walking up to hospitals, and even before that, I gave out a thousand meals to the community, just having people pull up in line. So honestly, it was like, you know, I was kind of hurt, but of course, you know, a black man lost his life, a human lost his life, it was bigger than my windows. So what I decided to do was, start helping the community right then and there. As soon as after the next day, the community stood behind me for one. And I just want to say I appreciate everybody who heard my story, who uh, wanted to help me out and everything that was going on. But the next day, I got a call. Um, Karen Civil, uh, Russ, shout out to Russ and Schoolboy Q. They, uh, Russ donated $20,000, Schoolboy Q donated uh, $10,000. And honestly, it was like a blessing to me because I didn't need the money. You know, the community, honestly, my business lined down a block every day. so. You know, when the GoFundMe, when I found out what they raised, it was like $26,000. I found every black um, business in the community that was a part of the community that was struggling, I gave them that money back. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I didn't need it. So, you know, it was me helping them. And right now, all I'm trying to do is build something every day to help the black community, to help our, our business strive better because we are geniuses, man. We're brilliant. We just got to understand that because every day, you don't see nothing but they say black on black crime. You know, we fall for the whole victimized thing. We got to stop killing ourselves, bro. Yeah. That's just all to it. And, and, and we come from rough communities. We come from, that's like you just said in that earlier, all we know is that. But now it's time for the people who got platforms 
to get to the youth to talk to them because they're not going to respect it from nobody else. They're only exactly. going to respect it from the higher ups. They're going to respect it from the people they've seen make it. That's right. like me telling you how to make a billion dollars. I don't have a billion dollars, but I got a plan how to get a billion dollars. Exactly. So you'll have a conversation with me about it. Oh, man. You know that's what I'm saying? Good. So if me and you both don't see nothing in common, how can you? How can we see eye to eye? Exactly. So that's how I feel about it. Hey, man. How did you get drop to that point? Address. Hold on. You got to drop the address again, just, huh? just so they can know hey, man. where to pull up So at. the best cheesesteak in the world right now it's 57 Forest Side Street, Atlanta, Georgia, 303, 30303, cross street from Georgia State. Um, I promise you, it's not a better cheesesteak in the world. Fast. That's what's up, man. How did you get that buzz, though? You say, man, your business lines up and down the block every day. How did you? It don't start like that. And a lot of people see business owners and entrepreneurs and see the success and think that they're going to walk right into lines down the block. So how did you get to that point? So to be honest with you, bro, like I, I, just like you, you just said, I thought I was going to invest this money and I was going to have lines. Well, it took me years to get these lines, but I will say that it took me to be the cashier. It took me to be the cook. It took me to be the investor. It took me to be anything that I needed to run my company inventory. I used to put food in the back of my car and all this stuff I did to grind to not be a failure to what I wanted to be in life for my father. Not to you know if you honor something to somebody you respect, you're going to go hard as you can go at it. Refuse so lose. I would <clears throat> tell anybody that's right now that out there that's you know, striving to be great. You can't listen to nobody. You only know what you built of you and God. Nobody else know. You could be around a homeboy every day. You don't know if it's, if, if it's loyalty in it until y'all both get big or one of y'all get big and then see if you gonna clap for me and root for me like I would've did for you. So that's our problem. We gotta clap and root for our people just like we wanna clap and root for ourselves and we'll all be successful. But we gotta understand that what starts with us first and that's just how I feel about it. Man, that's what's up. The best cheesesteaks yeah, cheese sure, in the world right here. Big Dave Cheesesteaks, a black man. Young entrepreneur, black man that did it on his own and still doing it. So if you looking for motivation, that's what we provide here at the 85 South Show. Motivation for young niggas. You niggas is in there cooking all them meals and shit for bitches you trying to fuck, nigga. Put some money behind it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey man, you know no, what real man? life, that's how I know what you just said. Listen, that salmon that y'all just eating, listen, I'm telling y'all a true story, man. Um, so I got a couple uh, homies that's in the industry and the salmon egg roll, I started making the salmon for Uzi. So he a, he a pescatarian, he don't eat meat. So we put that together for him and you know, it just was me just working on it over the years. I was in a gas station, so I had one fryer, so I couldn't, I couldn't use it in the gas station. So when I moved downtown, I was like, I'm coming out with the salmon egg rolls. I already knew they was gonna be a hit because I already know how people reacted off of it in them studios you know, <coughs> or people that I gave them to, but I work on something. I don't really eat my food. I go off of you or you or whatever, say, dang, you know, and then I'll taste it and know if it's there, but I don't try to brainwash myself to love my stuff. I like my, the people, you know, let the people speak fair. That's like an yeah. artist when you be like, oh, I'm hot, I could rap. Like, and then, no, let the people say that. Let the people say that you can do that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I've been in that, I'm working on stuff, you know what I'm saying? I got family that's in the music industry. I got uh, people that surround me that I want to see blossom, how bad they want to go at their craft. Right. Um, my cousin Dame, he coming with some heat, you know what I'm saying, producing. But I just feel like everybody around me right now, we got a, we got a tight bond and we going at everything hard. You know what I'm saying? Drop the social media, man. Hey man, at Big Dave Cheesesteaks, follow me. Come get the best cheesesteak. The lines is long, but we're working on you know, better production to get the time down and all that. But uh, that's what we're working on. And I got more stories coming. I got a surprise actually coming in two weeks. I can't let it out right now, but <laughs> it's gonna be on the gram. Hey man, we'll just you know what fuck with you. Hey man, for real. No I appreciate you, big day. Love, you. Love, you. Thank you, bro. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And we out this bitch. Good oh. shit, big dog. Going. Big Dave's doorbell.